I think Paul here. I've made some progress on my Nissan Leaf Range Extender Power Boot project, uh, secondary battery, whatever you want to call it. This is the final culmination of way too much time fiddling around with 3D printing designs and stuff. This is version 23 of my 3D printed copy of a genuine Nissan Leaf control plug that connects the car to the traction battery and um, these are the pins that have the CAN bus and control the relays, the main relays inside the traction battery. So the car tells the battery that it wants to turn the battery on, the computer inside the battery decides whether or not that's a good idea and then turns on the relays which then enables the 400 volts to come out of the main pins. Anyway, so um, I wanted to 3D print these because whilst I was able to get the plug for $90 New Zealand, which is about 60 US dollars, which to me felt like a hell of a lot of money, although now that I've gone through the process of designing a copy, connectors, sockets, plugs, they're difficult things to design. Um, so $60 is, is a bargain. But anyway, um, I've gone through the process now. Um, I could get, I was able to buy one of these, but I wasn't able to buy the other, the other side, um, this side, for any kind of reasonable money. Here in New Zealand, lots of people like me are buying up all the crashed Nissan Leafs and using them to make home power wall projects. So it's really hard to buy these, so I might as well 3D print something I thought. So I've got a copy of that which works beautifully. Um, it uses generic um, terminal pins that I bought off AliExpress. Uh, so that is dirt cheap. Takes a while to um, connect it all up. Certainly this has led me to a, a whole new respect for the value of a nice loom and good connectors. Man, it takes a long time. Anyway, once I 3D printed that, I was able to 3D design the other gender. And this, cunningly, I've copied an idea from a hacker called Wolftronics, who basically just used these standard connector wires, breadboard connector wires, and slotted them into a 3D printed holder like this um, and this is the end result and it works really well. The, the original socket in the leaf uses slightly wider pins but this does actually work so I'm going to stick with it. Anyway so what I have here is an extension cable for the data, the CAN bus and relay control wires so that will fit in between the battery and the cable that comes from the car. And then at the moment on the end of it I've just got some LEDs showing the level on the um, ignition line, the charge ignition line, relay 1, which turns off and on the negative of the battery, the pre-charge um, relay and its resistor, and relay 2, which is the positive side. Um, and this is just to validate that my plug and socket are working properly and they're passing all the required signals through. And uh, in order to work out what I should be seeing on these, somebody else has already done this. Um, my cat YouTube, on YouTube, went through this whole process and very helpfully provided these charts of what the various lines do during turn on, turn off, charging on and charging off. So I'm going to crawl under the car now, plug this in and watch these relays to make sure that they do what I expect them to. And if that all works then I know I'm good to move on to the next stage of the project. Okay. Um, Here's the main power connector going into the battery. The battery's all down there. Um, 
And this is the canvas relay control line. Unscrew that like that. And this one. Locks in place like that. This one. Here's my thing. And uh, currently nothing's turned on. The car's off. Let's go and see what happens if we turn it on. Alright, let's see what happens. The car turns on, it turns into drive and reverse. So that's good. Um, we're showing the ignition, charge ignition, relay one and relay two on. So those are the main ones. That's the power going to the car. And according to this sequence here, from uh, Mike at YouTube, that's exactly what we should be seeing. On, 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 off, on. And if we turn it off, so let's watch that. Yeah, so it's over five seconds between turning off and the charge ignition finally turning off. Um, and that is what we were expecting. So the next thing to test is the charger and charge turn on and turn off sequence. Alright, let's see if this works. I'll plug in my home EVC. And I'm expecting the main relays to turn on, which is good. So the internal charger is connected to the primary battery and charging away. And just checking on the three LED, blue LEDs on the dash, and they indicate that it is charging. So it's all behaving perfectly normally. Um, and if I unplug... That's good. So what all this means is that uh, everything's behaving the way I expect the relays are doing what I think they'll do. Um, it means that my 3D printed plug and socket are working fine and I'm able to peel off the control lines in order to control my secondary relays for the secondary battery. So that's what this is all about, peeling off the control lines so I can turn the secondary battery on and off in parallel with the primary battery. And um, that all looks like it's going to, going to work. Alright, thanks for watching. Cheers!